What's up guys, Jake here. Welcome back to another brokerage account update video. In the event you haven't seen my prior videos, I will include the playlist down below so you can catch up if you're confused. But basically it's me versus a total stock market index fund. I started the year with $25,000 and I'm trying to double my account balance by swing trading and trading options. But at the very least, I have to outperform a simple total stock market index fund. Otherwise I wasted my time and my money. And this video, my positions are current as of March 10th. This is trading day 46 of 252. And the market is coming up close on this one year anniversary of bottoming out. So there's gonna be a lot of volatility. There's gonna be a lot of uh, uh, people getting in and out of positions. The reason why is because of long-term capital gains tax. Anybody who bought during any of these uh, dead cat bounces or bought at the bottom, they've been holding their positions for one year and maybe they're in a stock that has run up huge, maybe it's a bit overvalued. So there's gonna be a lot of people rotating from these high growth stocks into more cyclical value stocks. In my opinion, that's what's occurring right now. And all the other finance YouTubers are talking about market crashes. However, I don't believe it and I'm not betting on it. But yeah, you'll see there's a, there's a buy and then a sell and then a buy and then a sell and we're currently in another buy. And I think it's just, it's just fund managers and big dollar uh, investors, once again, rotating their stocks, getting out of the techs and, 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 and the SPACs or, or whatever, I don't know. And they're rotating into more traditional blue cap stocks like insurance companies, banks, um, uh, um, uh, material goods, so once again, uh, if you're holding a lot of growth stocks and uh, you're not holding any value or cyclical stocks, you might continue to see a market crash, even though overall the S&P I think is gonna keep going up. And a good example is Tesla. Look at their share price, what it did on Tuesday. It was up 19.64% in one day. However, when you zoom out to the one month view, it was down, it's still down. 20.75% over the last month. So even though in one day it was up 20, it's still down 20 for the month. So for people buying the dip on Tesla, just, just don't have this be like 60 or 70% of your portfolio. But back to my brokerage account challenge and that total stock market index fund is up 4.32% uh, and I, I'm up 17.2%. Yes, that is correct. I started with 25,000 and, and my account value is currently up 4,316. Why is this? How did I do this? Well, I am crazy leveraged right now. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. What I'm doing right now is not disciplined trading. Normally, I'm a technicals guy, look at the charts, or I'm a fundamental guy, you know, look at their uh, income statements. However, if you're going to be swing trading or trading options in general, you have to pay attention to the news. And the news cannot get any bigger than it did this week. With the House passing the Senate's version of the 1.9 stimulus, uh, 1.9 trillion stimulus bill. So unemployment benefits are going to be extended. Everybody, not everybody, but most people are going to be getting $1,400 checks. Uh, things are also going pretty well with the pandemic. Um, Biden is ordering a bunch of vaccines from Johnson & Johnson, and the daily case numbers are going down, the, de the, the daily deaths are going down. It's still bad, but we're, we're, we're definitely seeing progress in the right direction, and hopefully by this summer we can get back to normal. Here are the positions that were current as of my last update video. The, uh, those were the stocks, these were the options. It's changed to this, and this is gonna be a little overwhelming if you've never seen my prior videos, you're not caught up with what I've been doing, but I, I rotated out of stocks that I was holding to free up buying power to buy more options. The reason why is because with the stimulus package passing, I, I said, I mean, if the stock market doesn't go up on the news that everybody's getting $1,400 checks, then I, I might as well just sell it all put it in government bonds and quit for the year. So I was like, this, this, this news has to be a certain. So I was looking for uh, stocks that had good fundamentals and I thought the charts looked reasonable that they could, they could continue going up. And I bought call contracts on once again, Fortune 500 well-established companies. So how many call contracts am I in now? One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then I still have a sold put outstanding. 13, 14 options is way too many. I'm doing, I'm doing way too much. However, I don't wanna sell anything that I've gotten into until this Friday at least. So I, I, you know, I think we've had four straight days of the Dow and S&P going up, and I see that continuing at least through Friday. So on Friday, I'm going to reevaluate all of these call contracts and get it, get it down to at least maybe eight or nine. But I had to exit one of my puts early and sell some stock in order to free up buying power. I think I'm on margin currently by $5,000, plus I'm insanely leveraged with all these call contracts. So I exited my position in CVS and Home Depot, once again, just selling the stock to free up buying power to buy call contracts. So on CVS, uh, profit on my cost basis of $13, Home Depot 22, and then when I uh, bought to close my uh, uh, sold puts, I made a net profit of $64. Here's my Excel spreadsheet showing all of my trades since when I started this challenge. And between the, uh, the options, 597, and then the, the, the stock uh, swings, 2000, that's over 10% right there on the year. So once again, I'm, if, if you look at my trades, nothing here is negative. I have not lost any money yet in two and a half months. No position that I've closed, I've closed at a loss. So I'm basically batting 1,000. Of course, I'm not that naive and I know that I won't be perfect on the year. I'm doing my best, but eventually I probably will have to close a position at a loss, especially with option contracts because they swing so they, they swing so wildly. So let's talk about the five new call contracts that I purchased in the last two days. And I bought call contracts on Costco and Apple, uh, Walmart and Home Depot. And I was in all four of those stocks. I've already talked about them in prior videos. The new position that I opened is on Allstate, which is an insurance company. I'm also in Aflac. So let's just go through the, each of these uh, one at a time. And the biggest surprise, honestly, in the market right now is Costco, still down 17% from its all-time high. And I kept dollar cost averaging in uh, on this steep slope down. And I think I bought the call contract the best time right here when hopefully it bottomed out. Here's the stock chart and it's below all four of its moving averages. And it is kind of concerning that the 50 day is creeping down to the 200 day because that would then be a death cross event. However, Costco is opening new stores. They're getting new memberships. Uh, they're increasing their online sales. People love Costco. This is one of the best brand names in the country. So I'm not worried at all that this stock in the um, six month to a year time period is gonna stay flat or go down further. So I bought a call and checking out the chains. Once again, checking IV is useful. You, you don't wanna buy a call contract when the IV is too high. You're not getting a good price for the premium on the contract. IV is in the 20s, which is a good, a good amount for me. So the call contract that I purchased expires on July 16th. My cost basis was $1,675. That's what I paid for the contract. And the strike price uh, is 30, uh, three, $320. So I bought when it was down here, it's already gone above my strike price, meaning the contract is now in the money. And my true break even price is uh, the share price of 336. So it has to get about here or above before I'm, I'm positive on my cost basis for buying this call contract. Now I've, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I'll reiterate it. I don't intend on holding any call contract until the expiration date. The reason why is because the extrinsic value wastes away precipitously in that last 30 days. So when I'm 60 days out, I'm going to evaluate that call contract to see if I want to close it. Uh, so I don't, you know, if I'm negative, it's probably not going to turn around for me in that last 30 days, especially. So let's think about this. Let's pretend that by July 16th, that this call contract got back to its 52 week high. It got back up to 390. What is the value of this call contract to whoever is still uh, holding it? You know, once again, I might I might sell it uh, in, in the next month or two, but let's pretend Costco's stock went back up to 390. 
To determine how much this contract would be worth, all the extrinsic value, theta and implied volatility is gone on expiration. So the value is just the intrinsic, which is the share price if the stock by July 16th gets back to 390. Subtract the strike price that you wrote for the contract, 320, then multiply by 100 shares because it's 100 shares per contract. The value of this call contract would be $7,000. So if Costco's share price gets back to its all-time high by this summer in four months, and if I was still holding the contract, I don't plan to, but if I was, then the contract would be worth $7,000. However, my cost basis was 1,600, so you have to subtract that. So I'm making, I'm making, I would make a little over $5,000 just from buying this call contract if, once again, everything goes according to plan. The next stock I bought a call contract on is Apple, and once again, I think this is a slam dunk. I don't see Apple having a bad year. All of their retail stores have been closed basically for a year now, and they're about to reopen. Uh, I plan on going to an Apple store when I visit La Las Vegas next month. Additionally, their new M1 chip MacBook Pros are coming out this summer. I plan on buying one. So Apple's share price is currently, six, it's still 16% down from the all-time high. And once again, I think I bought on this dip right here. And it's approaching its 200-day moving average. I don't, I don't think it's going to hit it, but it is below the 100-day. Ideally, it starts trading sideways, but maybe it can at least get back up to 130. That would be preferable to me. Looking at the option chains, the IV, once again in the 20s, that's what I look for before I purchase a contract. And the call, the call contract that I bought expires July 16th. My cost basis was $1,020. The, the, the strike price for the contract is $120. So my break-even price is 130 and 21. So the share price um, has to get above here for it to be in the money. But if it just gets close to here in the next month or two, uh, once again, I'll be up huge on, on the contract and I'll, I'll probably just sell, sell to close it. Next company I bought a call contract on is Home Depot. And Home Depot is not really down huge. It's only down 8% from its all-time high. However, this is a well-rested stock. It's, it, it shot up huge uh, and then peaked in September or, or August, and it's been trading sideways for almost six months. And that's actually a good thing. When a growing company with great sales has been trading sideways for a very long time, it's due for a breakout. Now, obviously, nothing is a guarantee, but when you see a stock trading sideways like this, especially for six months when their sales are amazing, uh, at some point, buyers will overcome the, the sellers and the equilibrium will be broken and the stock will then be in another breakout. So once again, I, I bought the call and I checked the IV on, on the chains. It was good. It was in the 20s. And this call contract expires June 18th. The cost was 1165 The strike price is 270 So it's it's almost uh, almost in the money again. However, my true break-even price is 281.65. So it has to get above here uh, for the contract to be in the money at expiration. However, once again, 30 days prior at least, I'm, I'm gonna try and get rid of it for a profit. Next company I bought a call contract on is Walmart and it's still down 13.5% uh, from its high. Once again, it peaked in December, kind of like Costco and Target did. I checked the IV chain, it's in the 20s, and uh, yeah, it just it just punched through its 100 and 200 day moving averages. But once again, uh, the revenue growth and the price to free cash flow, all, all the fundamentals for Walmart, in my opinion, are excellent. So this is an overreaction, this is an oversell. Call contract expires June 18th. My cost basis was 635. The strike price is 130, so I bought I bought in this dip on Monday and it's already it's already in the money. But my break even price is 136.65. So that's like right here. Um, you know, as, as far above that as it can get, uh, the more the, the more valuable this contract will be. Finally, the last company that I bought a call contract on is Allstate. Uh, once again, the insurers, people were just kind of wary of them. They didn't understand how a pandemic would, infect, would affect an insurance company. 
Allstate is actually not even back to its 52-week uh, high pre-pandemic. Look at that! Look at that drop uh, last March. So let's let's uh, let's look at the fundamentals here. Current PE is 6.5. Forward PE is nine. Price to free cash flow is only 7.47. Once again, you want all these numbers ideally to be below 20, though you can pay a little bit more for, for a growing company. Dividend yield is 2.85%. So let me show you the other things that I like to look for in a company to make sure that it has good fundamentals. And this is the, the website macrotrends.net. I like using it because I'm a visual person and you don't need to create like a username or password. This is a free website. So if we look at Allstate and we go down to revenue, we can clearly see that they've had growing revenue quarter after quarter for basically the whole decade. So that's, that's what they do in sales. If you go over to net income, this is their profitability. And ideally you want to see this increasing or at the very least flat. It looks like, um, let's, what, what quarter was this? Looks like they had a down year, but they've been profitable the last four quarters during the pandemic, which is huge. Next thing we can check is shares outstanding, and this is if the company uses their profit to buy back stocks. Uh, you, you, you want your share in the company to grow, uh, and, and companies can do this by buying back shares. And yeah, the whole decade they've been aggressively buying back shares, and they did not stop during the pandemic. So I'm feeling confident that any shares that I have in Allstate will keep increasing. Next, let's go to price ratios and click on price to free cash flow. Free cash flow is um, is basically the money they have left over to uh, issue dividends, uh, buy back stock, make acquisitions, and reinvest in the company. So this needs to be positive, and you want it to be a good ratio current to the share price of the company. So their price to free cash flow five five six six. Uh, this is, in my opinion, an undervalued stock. I checked their option chain, and once again, in the 20s, that's what I like to see before I buy. They also had their Golden Cross event uh, in December, and in my opinion, Allstate is now on an uptrend with their four moving averages lining up. So yes, I'm buying a call contract when the share price is already at an all-time high, but I don't care. I'm confident that this stock price is going to continue going higher. So the expiration date is July 16th. My cost basis is uh, $550. Strike price is $115, so it's off the charts. And my break even is uh, $5 above that. So it needs to get to $120.50 before this contract is in the money. But I think by this summer, Allstate will be there. Okay, guys, that was the updates to the account. Once again, there's a lot going on here. I, I over leveraged this week. That's how I got to 17% up in two and a half months. I don't want to hold this many call contracts. This is too much to me. But I'm once again uh, letting this good news of stimulus passing uh, kind of boost the market. And I'm going to exit a couple of these positions on Friday, reevaluate what the market is doing on Monday. People with direct deposits uh, are going to start getting their checks, <laughs> you know, in the next week or two. So we'll see. We'll see what effect that has on the market. Okay, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, once again, I throw a lot of stuff at you guys in these videos. If you ever have any questions about anything that I mentioned in the video or something you don't understand, let me know in a comment down below. I will help you if I can. Until the next update video, take care.